say you test uh, two zones together and you get half oil and half water. Well, did, did the oil and the water come out of one zone or did the oil come out of one and did the water come out of the other one? You know, some, sometimes, you know, sometimes it answers some questions, sometimes testing several zones together just raises more questions. Tool plugs, do you normally get a pressure reading? A lot of times it'll be erroneous. There's times where uh, a tool, when it plugs, you know, you know your flow will be completely uh, invalid because you'll have some real high invalid pressure. But there are times where the shut-ins will look like. It depends on the severity of the plugging. I mean, if the tool plugs immediately to where you never get rid of the hydrostatic, then if you have then 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 you won't have any then any, any valid pressure at all, but I've seen times where maybe the tool will open and uh, plug within the first couple minutes and then, and then basically go up into a shutting. Because one thing I always tell people, and it's so simple, but yet it's true, and people, you know, uh, a, a plugged tool and a shut-in tool are the same thing. Because, because back to those slides that I showed you of, of, in other words, when you shut that tool in, that's what you're doing, you're plugging that tool. The only thing that happens when a, when a tool plugs from, from the from factors of, with the formation, it's just that the tool plugs when you don't want it to because the rocks and the whatever whatever's down there that's plugging your tool, then it plugs the tool when you don't want it to be. Uh, and then I guess while we're talking about plugging tools, let me let me let me touch on flushing the tool and and uh, what ha what and and, I, and all of you that you know that are been out well sighting, you know they're well you know. So if, if we don't blow on the second opening, let's flush the tool. You know, let's see if we're plugged. And what happens there is, is we we uh, we pick the drill string back up just a little bit above string weight, and that that actually cycles the hydraulic tool back to its closed position. And then the, and the hydraulic tool has bypass ports in it. And so as soon as that hydraulic tool is picks back up, then we're actually putting hydrostatic pressure back under the packers again pressure and everything back up again with the, with the idea being that, that if we then we turn around and open the tool back up we've, we've got the extra boost of some hydrostatic pressure to try to, to try to unplug the tool if, if, in, if, if indeed we're plugged you know not, you know more often than not if the tool if, we, if we're not getting a blow it's because there's nothing there but 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 when you see a test with a with a spike in it just up and then back down that's that's where the tester actually flush the tool and, and, and on the surface you know if you if you flush the tool and, and open the tool back up and you and you see some bubbles chances are your tools unplugged and you're just the reason why you're not getting a blow is because there's there's nothing down there. Paul in your career have you ever seen flushing the tool uh, work? Not very often but yeah I have I mean maybe you know maybe maybe 10 or a dozen times but yeah there's times where you'll be plugged and then as soon as you flush it it'll it'll go on you know then it'll start blowing and then you can tell by the charts that you've you know cured the problem and it goes ahead and and but yeah it's it's rare yeah it's it's you know but it's it's uh, I think it's probably I think what you'd want to kind of also too you know if, and if you have some indications of plugging, like say you have a surging blow, you have a blow that's real erratic, you know, it'll, it'll blow and then it'll kind of quit and blow and kind of quit and then if it kind of... So in other words, if you have something telling you at the surface that this thing's trying to plug, then, and then if, it, then if it does quit blow, and then I would be... And I've, I've seen it sometimes where we've flushed the tool three or four times and, and, and you can kind of tell that it's trying to do something and then maybe the fourth time you flush it it'll it'll finally blow all that stuff on through and, and of course because one you know one, once you get whatever's plugging you up up inside your drill pipe and through the through the tool then you know then you're then you're home free and, and you're, you're back to testing again and and, the, and, uh, and probably the spot that I should have uh, maybe touched on more was just the you know you, you're tr you're trying to get all the fluid in that test it has to come through six holes that are that are about the diameter of a pencil so it doesn't take a very big rock or you know it, it, LCM you know I get questions about well how much LCM can I run and still get a test and and, uh, and my answer always is well that depends on how powerful your zone is I've seen I've seen tools plug with eight pounds of LCM and I've seen I've seen 16 pounds of LCM and, and get 2,000 foot of fluid you know if you've got a powerful if you got a powerful zone 
it'll push that LCM through that tool and go ahead and go, but, I've, but if you've got a real tight zone, it doesn't take much LCM and the LCM will be doing its job and it'll be plugging you off and keeping you from getting a, a good test. And there again, that inside and outside recorder would be an indication of that because if you'd still have those higher pressures outside compared to what you're seeing inside, then, there, then you would know that it's not your tool that's plugged, it's your anchor that's plugged. Anybody else? Let me, let me go into some case histories here. Paul, oh, do you have a diagram that shows that inside and outside gauge? For those of us who are challenged with you. You know, I was going to bring, uh, I was going to bring a, 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 actually the little thing that I built, and, and I, all of them that I've got are actually inside a, a, a pickup sub. But just pretend it, it's what I've what I've done is I've just taken and it's it's you know fairly simple but I've just taken some some uh, heavy wall pipe and I've and I've, uh, I've and it's horizontal like this pin and it's down in my pickup sub and then I've got a I've got a T in there and I've got this and so I've got so I've got I'm connected to the out in other words if the edges of this pin would be connected out they'd be out into the annulus in other words. It, from the outside it's just going to look like another hole in the perforation but it's not it's actually connected to this pipe and then I've got a T and then I've built a little uh, receiver I'd call it that, that's that's uh, that's just a few thousandths bigger and it's got o-rings to make it seal but it's just a few thousandths bigger than the than the OD of the recorder and so when we walk out there and when we stick the recorder down into this receptacle the bottom recorder and it's got pressure ports where it reads pressure at the very bottom it's down in this receptacle like, like this. In other words, there's a, there's a thing about this long that's on top of this T. And you stick that recorder, you put the recorder down in there, and then that bottom recorder, it's, so, so, the, so the ports on it, they're, not, they're, they're sealed off from the inside of the anchor, and the bottom, the bottom recorder is actually, it's seeing, it's seeing the annulus through, through that little pipe that I talked about. I don't know, is that, it's just a, it's pretty simple, but it works. You know, when you guys do your analysis, do you guys see a difference between the inside and the outside recorder? I haven't yet. I mean, not, not a difference that's any thicker than the pencil markets uh, that make it. Uh, I mean, occasionally you'll see some that are, all my looks up yesterday, they were timed differently, so they would stagger all the time if they didn't uh, do that right. But, yeah, it's insignificant so far. Yeah, and I've got some more examples of inside and outside. And then we're even, for one customer, we're even starting to run a, what we call a fluid recorder where we're, where we're putting a, a third recorder above the shut-in tool. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, and, I'll, and I'll go into that here in a little bit. But uh, if, if we're done with the questions, I'm going to, st I'll start moving into some case histories. Then I guess we'll take a little break then we'll do some more case histories and go from there. Let me just add one thing. Sure. I'm a huge fan of having at least two recorders in the hole, especially if they're measuring the same thing. I mean, electronics are great, but if you're out there spending a bunch of great time, a bunch of money testing, you come out of the hole and a recorder has failed, you know, you're, you're not real happy. No, no. Whether it's a long-term test or a DST or anything else, have at least two recorders. Oh yeah, yeah. Is this is this one of the reasons you stopped using the AK one? Yeah, yeah. I'm just um, well, there are several reasons. One is is I mean I mean the AK ones they they were they were the standard for so many years, uh, but you know there again it's a it's a totally analog way of measuring pressure. It's it's like listening to a vinyl record compared to a CD in in, in you know if you're into music, uh, but it's. But, but uh, they're just so, compared to electronics, they're just so prone to failure, plus every, it's, it's just so hard to get data off of them. You have to put them in a chart reader and read the chart every three minutes, and you've got baseline issues. In fact, I just took one of my chart readers and donated it to the museum in Great Bend.